The Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. EliteForm.com, IgnitionAPG.com, PlayUSA at PLAEUSA.com, and Soranex Exercise Equipment at Soranex.com. And now, the Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast. Welcome to Iron Game Chalk Talk with your host, Ron McKeever. Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the Let's max. Go. Let's go! Everything you got! On this podcast, hear Coach McKeever's straight talk about training, featuring the top strength and conditioning professionals from around the world. And now, here's your host, Ron McKeever. Guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefrey, and this is episode number 109. Iron Game Chalk Talk is a weekly podcast where I bring you experts in the field to talk shop. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to us on iTunes or YouTube or join the mailing list at ronmckeefrey.com to stay up to date with the latest guests and anything else that I have going on. This week, excited to have Phil Wagner with us. Phil is the founder of Sparta Performance out in Silicon Valley. In California there and just doing some incredible things uh, you know bridging the gap between science and strength and uh, you know we get into it we get into his unique background he played football at UCLA went you know played semi-pro rugby in New Zealand went to medical school uh, was a strength coach and uh, just has a well-versed uh, background that he's poured into this company and so we talk quite a bit about how the company's different um, how they've really like I said, bridge the gap between science and uh, technology and, you know, the practitioner and uh, really making it really easy for the coaches to evaluate their athletes, um, make things specific to them based off uh, their readouts and their and the data that's been given by their, their you know, patented technology and uh, just some really cool stuff. So I know you're going to get a ton out of this episode. Before we get started, I want to make sure we recognize all of our sponsors. We've got EliteForm.com, PlayUSA.com, uh, Ignition APG, and of course Sornex. And can't say enough about all these guys, but you know, Sornex is just continues to impress me uh, each and every day. We got our rack uh, delivered the other day to our house uh, when I go back to Tennessee uh, here next week uh, for the 4th of July weekend. We're going to put it together, our family, and get our first training session as a family in, in the garage with the, with the rack. And, you know, when, when getting an opportunity to, to put, you know, what you're going to train with your, your own kids, um, you know, it was, a, it was an easy decision uh, to go with Sornex and uh, the base camp rack. And, and so I can't, you know, um, tell you enough uh, positive things about, uh, you know, the, the gang there, you know, the, the people. I think that's the most important thing and what they're doing and how they're giving back to our community. But um, make sure you go to SwordX.com. Go follow them on, Sword, on Facebook or Twitter or, and just stay up to date with what they got going on because it's just a really uh, cool company and, and constantly putting out some great information. So uh, please check them out and let them know how much you appreciate them being involved with Iron Game Jock Talk. All right, I want to get to our guest, Phil Wagner. I know you're going to get a ton out of this. Sit back and enjoy this episode, and we'll see you on the other side. Just a quick note, I want to apologize for the audio and quality of the video on this episode. As you guys know, we're shooting these episodes with Skype and the time crunch and the whole deal uh, can, can be uh, a challenge sometimes. It's a great uh, episode with tons of great content. Uh, for the most part, it's, you can hear everything just fine, but wanted to acknowledge it and apologize to Dr. Phil Wagner for uh, the quality, but... Uh, Appreciate him coming on and, and sharing, and, and there's just too many great nuggets of information in here to uh, pass up. So we're going to go on with the episode, and uh, we'll make sure to get him back on for another episode in the future. Thanks. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. Excited to have Dr. Phil Wagner with us of Sparta's uh, performance out in California. And this is I'm, I'm, this is exciting for me because this is a, a program that I've, I've had a Sincere interest in uh, Coach uh, Hootie at Kansas speaks very highly. Uh, we have lots of mutual friends, and and uh, just excited to get you on the show. So thanks a lot for taking time out of your day, man. Yeah, I'm excited too. Thanks, Ron. He's got he's about to jet set around the world here pretty soon. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna shoot a quick episode, but 
But Phil, can you go a little bit into, you know, kind of, you know, I know you played ball, you played ball in college, you, you went and you played professionally, rugby, you know, I know you have a love for for sport, but kind of what got you into the, the strength side of things and the science side of things and um, kind of what's led you to just to found this company and, and what's going on with you now? Yeah, you know, it, it, I think it started as, as an athlete in that uh, you know, sustained injuries like we all do. And um, I kept recurring the same injury as I played football. Or went through you know, the protocols as would be expected, good surgeons, good rehab, really diligent. Um, it just didn't seem to, nothing I did or surgeon I had seemed to, to help really solve the issue um, and really started to think, man, it's got to be like a, a more exact way of figuring out what I need versus somebody else um, more objectively, very similar to medicine. Um, when I got out of uh, being an athlete, I uh, became a strength coach at Cal and uh, really uh, just loved every minute. Uh, worked with my first mentor, Todd Rice. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and really into Olympic lifting and details and spraying and agility. Uh, I think, like a lot of strength coaches, met with not success on the field and we were all let go, you know, after a couple of years. Um, and that was a shock to me that we did a job um, that wasn't reflected. Ultimately, what matters, you know, um, we all gotten let go. So, right. kind of a, a, a fork. Uh, and you know, decided to go to medical school and uh, learn more about how doctors approach disease with patients. And all the while, keeping my foot in the door, I worked as a strength coach at Penn and then at UCLA while I was finishing up school to become a physician. Yeah, that's it's um, that's fantastic. You know, and that's I mean, that's ultimately why we, we end up getting into what we we do is is um, you know it's we're motivated by our own experiences and and obviously that leads us down the right the path and obviously with the medical background and, and coming at it from a little bit different approach it, it, it really kind of forced you to kind of look at what we were doing in the strength and conditioning world from a little bit different perspective and and make a decision on how to to go about so kind of. Go into you know Sparta performance and, and kind of how it's unique and how you've really integrated that that scientific and that in that in that uh, you know laboratory type of approach to the weight room. Right. Yeah, I think you know ultimately what I was seeking when we set up Sparta was taking you know for myself. I mean, I'm still trying to not get fired from 15 years ago. Right? I mean, <laughs> you and me both. Like. like <laughs> It's like, uh, you know, that, 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 that dumps you in high school and you're still upset about it, you know. And so I'm, I'm ultimately trying to prove myself, you know, from years ago. I think the other thing, though, is trying to validate the field. You know, the, the field has so much potential um, to be an effective in an athlete's lives. Being safe injury because you're stronger to happens, you know, at the end of the day. A strength coach is the one spending the majority of time with the athlete. And what sort of habits can we convey and validate, you know, as tools that we actually change the trajectory or the fate of that individual? Um, and so it's part of the sound on that premise to really validate those things and collect data that would show, hey, we're, we're predicting, we're preventing bad outcomes. So, how? What are some of the ways that you've kind of found to, to do so? I know, I mean, the, you know, obviously with force plate technology, or you know, that's a major component of it. Talk a little bit about how you've you've integrated some of that technology into identifying where some of these muscular deficiencies and imbalances are, and um, you know how you've got to kind of come about creating a plan to address each different type of athlete. Yeah, you know, I think setting up our in the Silicon Valley was really strategic uh, just to be in touch and accessing accessing all these different software engineers and um, minds of, of how to connect systems because ultimately that's probably one of the bigger limitations right now is you've got all these systems and how do I get 
schools current and accurate. So we set up um, in the Silicon Valley and Sparta to, to really kind of bring in not only force plate data, but you know nutritional data, workout information, and um, all types of GPS, any sort of information that a club deems appropriate for their culture. And then using all that data and mining it to find the trends and the patterns of what causes injuries and performance. So, you know, what the likelihood is an ACL is for an 18-year-old versus a 22-year-old, soccer versus basketball. All that, all those trends are only possible now because of the evolution of technology and the ability to connect, you know, to things like an AI, where one system can automatically talk to another. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and so I think being where we are in Silicon Valley has really helped kind of push that um, that agenda of getting more and more coaches to be able to see all the data in one place and most importantly take action on it, right? And not just have it in the spreadsheet. Right. You know, the remote location. So yeah. you, with the technology, you know, and you're, you're aggregating all this different data from different, you know, uh, variables, how are you, uh, you know, what separates you from maybe some of the other companies that are, that are out there that are doing some of the similar types of things? And, you know, and I, what I've been very impressed with is the fact that it's, you know, it's, it's integrated fully into the, the training facility and how it, and it's, and it's educating. I think, you know, one of the things I always say with, you know, what's the difference between the NFL and, and, and college football, or, you know, the areas that I've spent is that, you're dealing with a more informed consumer, you know, and, and you're working with some athletes um, and the athletes that I've known that you've worked with, I mean, they walk away and they really fully feel like they get it. And so, you know, how are you able to bridge that gap with educating the athlete on here's the things that you need to work on in that real time, real environment and, and kind of taking it out of that, that clinical type of setting? I would say one word, transparency. We don't hide any for athletes. Um, and I think in this new age of athletes where they grew with Google, you know, they're used to being able to access whatever information they want, whether it's their own medical history, um, whether it's, you know, looking at their hamstring attachments, they can Google it and find it. Absolutely. Um, and I think the technology, ultimately our role is to educate athlete on why things are being done, why they assess, were assessed a certain way, what the treatment plan is, whether it's a squat or a sprint, you know, um, or a rehab process. And I think that's, with the new generation, I mean, that transparency and the visualization that technology can provide of, hey, you got better, right? Right. Or, you got worse, right? Shocking if you sleep four hours a day, you're not going to get much better, <laughs> no, right? So, it's trying to make those connections of the foundation we've always known. We've always known, right? You get stronger, you're healthier, right? You sleep more, you're more alert. You know, we're not, we're not reinventing the wheel there. I think what we're doing is it easier to tell that story. Sure. Yeah. So when an athlete walks in the gym for the first time, you know, and um, what's your, you know, kind of what's your evaluation process and then how are you kind of making – that athletes work out a little bit more specific to them as opposed to maybe more in like a team setting as well. You know, yeah. you got, you got an entire basketball team coming in, you know, how you evaluate them and then kind of t- you know, making the workout specific to each individual athlete. Sometimes the basketball team seems like the size of a football team, probably um, just because they're, <laughs> they're a tough group to work with. Yeah, oh yeah. Makes, it makes people like, uh, and the basketball spring coaches out there, you know, um, it's so noteworthy what they're doing. It's, it's a challenge. Absolutely. Um, we try to change that high school culture when they get to college and beyond. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, when an athlete comes in the door or when a team works, they, they'll use the counter movement jump as a basic assessment of where the athlete is at and really assess three variables. They'll look at their eccentric rate of force, or what we'll called load. Again, trying to be transparent with the athlete. They're not 
Sure. No, that, that's that's fantastic. Now that's I'm assuming those are the three variables that you're using to create their their what you're calling the motor signature. Yeah. So the the you know we call it a a, a movement signature motor signature, and it's really that neuromuscular global assessment of you know where the athlete's at. You know, are they fatigued? Are they at risk for injury? Are they suited for that position? You know, an unexpected uh, method of the software. A lot of Professional teams use it for projection in the draft. Sure. Okay, you want to make this guy a, a guard rather than a tackle. Does he have a profile of what others found to be a, an NFL offensive guard? Um, and so, yeah, I think that that profile allows us to um, assign a specific program and to the issue of, of job security in our field. Ultimately, we can then prescribe the validation, right? So right. there are a lot of injuries, right, over the course of the year. But statistically, we're clearly showing everything was done to prevent those. The strength coaches in the industry is no longer at the bottom of the food chain. Right. The last one to get sent. I was done. It's like, well, good. You know, look elsewhere, right? Sure. Um, and so I think ultimately that's end point is that program every organization uses it a different way and has their own program and then as a result gets a an ROI, a return on investment they can provide you know, to the GM, to the athletics center, look how much money we saved or look how many snaps we saved or how many minutes we saved by, you know, getting strong. Yeah, absolutely. Right things. So, yeah, so I'm assuming to some degree you, you would take those three you know, whether it be load or force or, or impulse or or drive, yeah. you know, you would kind of put them into maybe three different areas within the room and, and kind of, you know, train those three yeah. different areas. You know, with a football program, you know, where you're dealing with maybe an entire offense or maybe an entire defense, you got 50 plus guys in there and you have eight hours in the week to to accomplish that. You know, are, are you doing yeah. the same thing or are you, or, you know, how would you kind of, what would your recommendations be to the, the college strength coach trying to kind of implement that type of programming? Yeah, so, you know, with football, what a lot of the, the teams have done, you know, Cal's a great example uh, nearby us over here. You know, what they've done is they've had three tracks, like you mentioned, where there's a load group, and they're focused on really flexion and eccentric, you know, squatting, and then you've got an explode group where they're doing more of the Olympic lifts you know, and then you've got a drive group, which is doing more single leg, uh, posterior chain type training. Right. Because the reality is, right, all three of those movement groups are really valuable, right? It really is a matter of, right. you know, who are you going to use. And that way, they've only got three tracks going on at one time. And so it's a good balance between individualization, but you still have that camaraderie of, okay, the load group's working together and then the explode group's working together, you know? You don't lose that art, right, or that feel. Right. Coach. Well, you know, I would assume, and again, I mean, I think you would agree with me that, you know, there's, there's a continuum there. I mean, you want, you want, you want all three, you know, you want, yeah, so how do you maintain the balance um, within, you know, within the programming, again, for, for maintaining where you're maybe got strength and still continue to develop, but, you know, being able to uh, enhance the rate limiting factor with, wherever you're deficient, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that, that is, I mean, I just got an email on that today from one of the universities we work with. The rate limiting, you know, the rate limiting step of, you know, so the statistics we run um, and have universities run, um, what they found is that certain movements have negative effects, right? And so being aware of the negative effects is positive. It's important for a lot of these coaches because, then they're able to include things that are good maximum benefit, but avoid those groups where they might be doing things that actually basically drive with the break up. Sure. You know, because they're in the gas, but it breaks them too. Um, so those negative action statistics have been as effective but including as the positive. Yeah. Yeah. With the... Um so, you know, obviously, and this is kind of the, you know, this has kind of been a theme on the, on the show a little bit with talking, you know, various de- different technologies. 
you know, as a as a strength coach, you know, it's it's one of those deals where you, you know, obviously, it, it all goes back to education of the athlete and trying to you know to have a, an impact on those those twenty two hours that you're not that you don't see them, you know. But at the same time, it's 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 you know the when you're dealing within the team and the you know the camaraderie and the and the unity and the building. Um, uh, you, you, know, you don't want to get to a point to where you're kind of reinforcing uh, negative behaviors. You know, like I don't, you know, if they have a poor HRV and they walk in the weight room because they've been out drinking or, or staying out all night, I'm not going to reward that by giving them the day off necessarily, you know. Um, That's right. How have you kind of got, have you, you know, what kind of tactics have you used to really, and this again, this goes back to one of the things I've been most impressed with is, uh, the the transparency and the education of your athletes. What are some of the recommendations that you would have for other coaches around the country, around the world, um, in terms of really breaking down those barriers uh, of you know getting them to understand completely what they're doing when they're outside of the gym uh, that it contributes to their performance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a, a lesson I guess I've learned is I've got just because wrong. You- you have a chance to be wrong more as you get older, you know, with, uh, how important it's been to be vulnerable with athletes. Mm-hmm. Because if you are transparent with the data, they're going to see that they're going to get worse sometimes. You know, and for you're vulnerable of like, you know, you've got two options. You have to be good enough to explain the concept of delay transformation, saying, hey, sometimes it gets worse before you get better. You're on track statistically. We're going to have to just push through this. The other option is, you know, be even more vulnerable to, you know what, I don't know. You got worse this week, and I really don't know why. Here's what I think, you know, but I think that really has athletes catch them on guard, like, wow, he really doesn't know. That means when he does some of the other stuff, he knows. You know what I think? So admitting those shortcomings only strengthens, you know, the things that it which doesn't want to convey and knows they want to convey. You know, so I, I think the vulnerability is a huge piece. Um, I, I think the other part is simplicity. You know, with with technology, I think um, in this age, we're getting too much and Great. checking boxes to, to, to say we check boxes, right? But the reality is, like, if you don't use it, you know, why are you Right? Why aren't you using your time to collect other things you do? Right. Or educate an athlete as a sport coach. I'm an NBA team, and one of the best things I've seen in a long time is right after we got, got done scanning them, the strength coach turned around and said, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we show all the athletes within 24 hours that we're close. Because we want to have the best practice that when we get data, they see it. Right. They know what it is. And they know what we're going to do, which is great. Absolutely. Well, the more information they have, the better for sure. And, uh, I, you know, you go back to exactly, I think you hit it right on the head with relationship building. I mean, it's just about it with any relationship. I mean, you have to be a little vulnerable and you have to be simplistic and you have to, you know, you have to invest time to get time back, you know. And, and uh, I think that's what's obviously you guys are doing with your athletes and it's impressive. With, with any kind of new... You know, so when you walked away from Cal as a, as a strength coach and you went back to med school and and and, you, and you're like, I have a I have a vision. I, this is a, you know, I, you had Sparta as a vision in your head. You know, obviously early on you didn't have all the data and all the you know you know all the data mind to kind of support your theories and and you didn't have you know the the testimonials and the success examples and and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's always I always love talking to trailblazers a little bit because. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of what we have to do. We have to, you know, we have a clear vision of what we're thinking about doing. Maybe don't always have it supported yet, but you, you have a, you know, you, you want to integrate it, you know. And so what were some of the key things just early on that you, you know, how were you able to sell yourself, you know, build your brand and get athletes to buy into something that they really quite couldn't see just yet? Yeah, I think the, you had mentioned relationships. I think over-delivering there mm-hmm. um, was the key to getting us off the ground. You know, when we opened, we had zero customers, zero athletes. The U.S. just entered a recession. You know, uh, it's pretty much a nightmare. You know, <laughs> Wrong. It, it, you know, the thing that saved us is, I mean, I remember back in those days going to dinner.
dinner with every athlete, you know, you know, calling everybody, going out to practices, you know, and, and just really over delivering for a few reasons. One, we needed business. Sure. <laughs> but you know, the other is, you know, so much you learn so much by seeing how others coach and, and how other athletes move and and their feedback and, and so it was a big learning process as well. But you know, going out and doing outreach just for the sake of making relationships. That was that was the catalyst and the benchmarks that kind of allowed it to grow. Sure. I think because ultimately, you know, I mean, ultimately, Sparta has been the conglomerate of you know the friends we have in the field. Yeah. You know, that effect on what we do. Cal's that effect on what we do. You know, all these different organizations that that we've chatted about. They all, you know, almost you know give a piece or take a piece and make. You know, the brand what it's become. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, with that, you know, when you're when you're forming the company, and this is one of the things, what's kind of one of my pet peeves a little bit about where we're at as a profession, where we're at as a as a as a country, even is, you know, right now we're not we're not you know leading the way in, in research and you know strength coaches. You know, we're we're so time consumed that, you know, our practitioners aren't taking the time to really write and conduct research and speak and, and do those types of things. And, I mean, I, you know, I would imagine, you know, starting a company and being an American company, you know, when, when you're competing with, you know, you know, it seems like everything's coming out of Australia or United Kingdom or, uh, you know, Sweden or wherever, you know, how are you able to kind of really close the gap there? And, and you know, where do you think – from from just purely uh, a country, we need to go to kind of continue to be uh, one of the leaders in the sports science area. Mm. Awesome, yeah. You know, I think that yeah, I've been fortunate to be one of the the only you know companies to go the opposite direction, right? Yeah. Where we're we're growing faster right now internationally than we are domestically. Wow. Um, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with we're capitalizing on the U.S. strength, which is tactical, you know, solutions. I agree with we're that. From, how are we going to fix it? Um, we need to get better at identifying the problem, using technology to monitor and explain it better. But as far as, and once you point an American strength coach in the right direction, we're gone. Like, we're good. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, sports science has two pieces, and too often it's, with a hardware like a software or a GPS, and that's it. But how you use it, that's a huge piece of it. It's just saying, well, we're going to do an MRI on a patient, and it needs to be better after we identify the ACL. Right. No. So the second piece is like, what's the best practice to address it? And I think leveraging the, the strength of the U.S. tactical approach with you know the international strengths of assessments has been direction of traffic so sure you can try to help and I think ultimately it helps hopefully it helps the, the U.S. as a brand of sports science see yeah you know this this is a company that's come out of the U.S. that's doing sports science and man we're using it you know we're using it to make decisions no uh, that's great um, which I think we're really best yeah. well I think it's you know I've you know I've spoken several times internationally and I'm so impressed with how um a lot of the Olympic sport countries are, are utilizing science to drive their training. And, um, and you're right. I mean, I think that the tactical part of it is, is kind of where we've been really great about providing resources towards that area and, and, uh, and, and, you know, developing coaches and coaching and things along those lines. I think it's something that um, we need to continue as a profession to continue to grow and challenge ourselves uh, to continue to educate our coaches and to educate our administrations and our GMs and things along those lines that, you know, sports science isn't going, it's not going away. It's only getting better. And, uh, right. and there's some great companies out there doing some fantastic things that can help us become better practitioners. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, if we continue to utilize um, each other and build, you know, from w- within – and challenge ourselves to give back. I think that's the other part of it. That's one of the reasons why I do the show. 
it's one of the reasons why I always challenge myself to con- you know get out and, and, and continue you know continually learn and challenge my own ideals um, because it's you know if we don't and we just stay stagnant we're gonna we're gonna definitely get passed by uh, regardless of where you live in the world. I know you guys you guys invest a lot into your interns and developing that internship program out there but you know give us you know give us the best piece of coaching advice you've ever received yeah I think you know the, the, the mentors I've had in the field I, I they weren't they weren't big um, sit down and talk about <laughs> principles and coaching um, they were just really good at leading by example so the 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 head coaches or the directors I've worked with, they're hands on, and they'll approach a dynamic warm up just like a one RM squat, just like a sprint. And I think a a global but very detailed appreciation of every movement and its mechanics. Um, you know, Todd Rice, one of my mentors, I mentioned, and another one at Penn, Rob Wagner. Uh, both of those guys are just watching them coach the mechanics. And spend all day on the movement. One of my stories was John Madden came back from group when he was coaching. He said, I thought I knew a lot about coaching until John Barty talked the whole day on one play. Yeah. You know, and then I realized how little I knew. <laughs> um, and still, the coaches that I really have been blessed to be around, they could talk a full day on one movement, you know, and, and they're on the floor. Too, where um, it's that chasing biomechanically. Absolutely. You know what? And this, you know, this was one question I didn't ask, but I, you know, I don't want to leave without asking it. Is I mean, you're going around and you're working with some of the elite programs in the country and, and around the world now. You know, when you're going in, what seems to be the the, the common, uh, you know, pain point? The common question that every you know coach is you know looking to get answered and uh and where you feel like uh we can continue to get better as a profession yeah for the most part you know we wrote a blog um a couple months back on this topic i think the common theme is that strength coaches want and uh, a seat at the table they to be at the table Make decisions. I'm like, okay, the weight guy. So you're in the weight room, right? And then we'll handle it. And else. Not recognizing the carryover. So I think the biggest thing is wants to be validated. And I think field of conditioning, I think, as since the song has been, what we've done has been pushed to the side as a, as a necessary thing, but not necessarily a highly prioritized aspect, right? And, and there's so much we can have met teaching progressive programs for rehab, right? I mean, there's so much principles and strength condition that apply there. Um, that can apply to GPS, that can apply to planning sport practice, right? What drills, when, and that's coach, that's because this is high volume, this is low volume. So I think the pain point has always just been trying to get about it for these coaches and these organizations using technology to show that, to do that. Sure. Um, that's the biggest pain point. No, yeah, I, I would agree. Job. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with you 100%. Right. I think that goes back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier with, you know, continuing to to challenge ourselves and, you know, and, and to be more professional and, and to be, you know, more, um, you know, conduct more research and, and speak on topics and, and, 
really uh, push the field further and forward as opposed to, you know, reinventing, you know, something that's been around for, for some time, you know, and just spinning in a different way. But, no, that's good. I'm glad I, I glad to threw that in there. What about, you know, with these young coaches that you have coming in, you know, and, and with a unique company? Because it's not just, especially in, a, in the early stages of a company, it's not just about finding a strength coach or a qualified person. It's finding somebody that fits the culture. You know, what, what's a what's a what's a common question that you ask, or you know, a question that you you feel like gets to the root of the culture? You know, for your company, that might separate out. That's that's unique. That's something that you don't always hear out there. In the yeah, interview process, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, is passion. I mean, a lot of times. talk a lot about that with our with our interns and we call it their you know their unique selling proposition what the, what's what's unique about yeah. them you know what are they going to bring um and i think that that's an important lesson i'm glad you, you said that because you know as you uh, if, if you know any coach in general myself included i mean when you leave a program you need to find out what people felt like really stood out about you and, and what your strengths are and and that's going to be something that you'll, you'll utilize in those job interviews and those settings and, and things like that. Because you don't always, I mean, you're, you, you know, you're living it. You don't always see it from a different perspective, you know. And I think that's a, a fantastic, that's a fantastic way to go about. What a, uh, you know, I, I love your quote. You, you sent me your quote early. You know, give me, what's your favorite quote that you have, you know, plastered up or one that you live by? Yeah, you know. not gonna you know let's let's face it that you know that that nba athlete that nfl athlete or you know shoot coaches in general they're not always going to understand those spider graphs and those those charts and those those readings and you know uh, you got to make it simple for me in, in, in digestible terms i always talk to our I tell our coaches that they got to be able to explain it to a 10 year old they got to be able to explain it to my daughter and if they can explain it to my daughter she understands it then they then they've done a good job what about you know? Uh, what's give me a, a you know a couple book recommendations, um, and if there's any apps or websites that you you generally check out. You, know, you, you had mentioned with with your intern program the unique selling proposition USP. You know I believe a lot of coaching is is selling right. You're selling to the athlete, um, private or public realm. Doesn't matter. You're selling selling to the athlete. You're selling to the sport coach. Um, and so one of my favorite books is To Sell as Human yeah. by Dan, Dan Pink. Pink yeah. And uh, really, yeah, really talking about, you know, everybody's selling, you know. it's You have to realize it, embrace it, and sell the way that makes your family fit. Um, you know, the other book I had mentioned, Vulnerability, you know, there's a, there's a book by Brene Brown called The Power of Vulnerability, really talking about how, with, especially it's hard in sports and coaching, how important it is to, 
really convey that vulnerability, that authenticity, right? So you do give that first step in the relationship, right? Absolutely. What about, is there any apps that you're using with your athletes or your own, for your own productivity? Um, so, yeah, we, we have an app. The Sparta software has an app where athletes are logging in nutrition and sleep, um, their workouts, any sort of self-care uh, as a way to, um, you know, continue to really develop habits, you know, because we all know the only thing the athlete is never without is their phone, yeah. right? So, you know, the daily habits more likely to be developed if, the, if it's on a phone. Sure. Um, personally, for me, um, most of my time is spent either talking on the phone or um, using it to read some of the books that I mentioned, you know, via Kindle app. Yeah. No, that's great. Any websites you generally check out? Um, you know, at this, at this point, I think you know, most of my, no, I mean, most of my learning and education is from talking with other coaches. Yeah. You know, hey, we saw this. What do you think? Um, both young and old coaches, um, seeing what trends they have, you know, what the problems, you know, we had, uh, the Cal staff come down and, and, uh, and watch our session, you know, watch our coaches coach and had a lot of nice things to say, but they also gave us a good piece of feedback that said, you know, make sure you ask the athlete or get the athlete's attention before you give the feedback. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of times our coaches are just saying chest up, you know, they're squatting, but, Athlete realizes you're talking to him, the cues passed. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I think learning by having other coaches evaluate you and vice versa is a, it's been more fruitful for me than, than a website at this point. Absolutely. No question about it. That's, uh, and again, that's why, I mean, that's why we do the show. And it's, and I, and I would, I would right. echo that with, you know, having kind of a, a peer accountability partner, somebody that, you know, you trust that's in the field that, you know, come in and watch and, right. Tell me the fleas, you know, see, you know, tell me what you see. Tell me if my coaches aren't coaching when they're, you know, when I'm, when my back's turned or my athletes are not touching the line or, or whatever. It's a, it's a valuable, you know, it's, it's valuable to have another set of eyes that you trust to come in and, and, and do an evaluation. And, and, and likewise, you also need to get out and see other ways of, there's so many ways to do it. And there's so many ways to skin the cat, you know, that you have to get out and see, um, just so you challenge your own ideals, you know. Because there's a lot of really good people in this profession, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, you, you keep touching on that, uh, almost making yourself uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, and, and, and learning to, like, all thrive on it or live on it. Uh, I think it's a good reminder, too, a lot of times athletes aren't comfortable when we're training and it gives you a little empathy of, like, man, yeah, first time doing cleans or first time doing something, you know, athletes are pretty uncomfortable and, if you're going through similar things in a different setting, you have some empathy towards that. Absolutely. Well, you're about to you're about to be uncomfortable for about a month here, going overseas for about a month and and just traveling and planes, trains, and automobiles, right? But um, I, I I do I, I truly appreciate you coming on, man, sharing with us and and uh, spending a little time. Where can we get more information about you know Sparta and and you know everything that you have going on? Yeah, so we have we have two separate you know companies. One is the software company, Sparta Software, mm-hmm. and the other is Sparta Software. So that's more where our coaching um, takes place at the exact location here in Menlo Park. SpartaSoftware.com and SpartaScience.com. Awesome, man. Well, buddy, I appreciate it, man. Have a great trip. Thanks for coming on, man. Come on, thank you. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chop Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree, on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash ron dot McKeefree. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk.